In the same manner, the bird sounds we hear are also in our brain. If the nerve traveling from the ear to the brain was disconnected, there would be no sound left. Put simply, the bird, the shape of which we see and the sound of which we hear, is nothing but the brain's interpretation of electrical signals. Another point to be considered here is the sense of distance. For example, the distance between you and this screen is nothing but a feeling of space formed in your brain. Also, objects that seem to be very distant in one person's view are actually images clustered at one spot in the brain. For instance, someone who watches the stars in the sky assumes that they are millions of light years away from him. Yet the stars are right inside himself and the center of vision of his brain. While you watch this film, you are in truth not inside the room you assume yourself to be in. On the contrary, the room is inside you. Your seeing your body makes you think that you are inside of it. However, you must remember that your body too is an image formed inside your brain. So far, we have been speaking repeatedly of an external world and a world of perceptions formed in our brain the latter of which is what we see. However, since we can never actually reach the external world, how can we be sure that such a world really exists? Definitely we cannot. The only reality we cope with is the world of perceptions we live within our minds. We believe in the existence of objects just because we see and touch them and they are reflected to us by our perceptions. However, our perceptions are only ideas in our mind. Thus, objects we captivate by perceptions are nothing but ideas and these ideas are essentially in nowhere but our mind. Since all these exist only in the mind, then it means that we are beguiled by deceptions when we imagine the universe and things to have an existence outside the mind. To imagine matter to have an existence outside the mind is indeed a deception. The perceptions we observe may well be coming from an artificial source. It is possible to see this in the mind's eye by an example. First, let us suppose that we could take our brain out of our body and keep it alive in a glass jar. Let us put a computer in which all kinds of information can be recorded. Finally, let us transmit the electrical signals of all the data related to a setting, such as image, sound and smell, to this computer. Let us connect this computer to the sensory centers in our brain with electrodes and send the pre-recorded data to our brain. As our brain perceives these signals, it will see and live the setting correlated with these. From this computer, we can send to our brain also signals pertaining to our own image. For instance, we can send to our brain the electrical correlates of such senses as sight, hearing and touch that we perceive while we sit at a desk. In that state, our brain would think itself as a businessman sitting in his office. This imaginary world would continue as long as the stimulations keep coming from the computer. We would never realize that we only consist of a brain. It is indeed very easy for us to be deceived into believing perceptions without any material correlates to be real. This is just what happens in our dreams.
For you, reality is all that can be touched with the hand and seen with the eye. In your dreams, you can also touch with your hand and see with your eye. But in reality, you have neither hand nor eye, nor is there anything that can be touched or seen. Taking what you perceive in your dream to be material realities, you are simply deceived. For example, a person deeply asleep in his bed may see himself in an entirely different world in his dream. He may dream that he is a pilot and command a giant airplane and even spend a great effort to command the plane. In fact, this person has not taken even one step away from his bed. In his dreams, he may visit different settings and meet with friends, have a chat with them, eat and drink together. It is only when the person awakes from his dream that he realizes all were only perceptions. If we are able to live easily in an unreal world during our dreams, the same thing can equally be true for the world we live in. When we wake up from a dream, there is no logical reason for not thinking that we have entered a longer dream that we call real life. The reason we consider our dream to be fancy and the world is real is nothing but a product of our habits and prejudices. This suggests that we may well be awoken from the life on earth, which we think we are living right now, just as we are awoken from a dream. After all these physical facts are